Grab one of these three drawer bins from Walmart and we are gonna dress this up. I picked up some half round pieces of wood and I need to cut them down to roughly four and a half inches each. Now it's time to attach them to the drawers. I wanna cover the front of the drawer to give this kind of a natural boho look. I picked up a multi-surface glue. So this is gonna work really well on wood and plastic and it dries clear. So I'm just gonna put a dab of glue on each piece of wood and put them all the way across the drawer. Now that everything's dry, I'm gonna take this outside and add a coat of spray paint. I'm opting for a real neutral beige color and I'm gonna cover the front of the drawer and the wood. I opted to leave the rest of the drawer set white. I really like the contrast between the beige and the white and I think these drawers look so good. It is such an upgrade from the basic drawer set that I had originally. Let's run on down to Walmart and it's time to grab your favorite inexpensive bucket. We got to get those handles off. We don't need those. Take them off both sides. They clip right off. Next, we're going to take that bucket and flip it over. We need to set in two strips of wood that are going to fit right on the edge. Just go ahead and set it down there. No need for a tape measure and just mark it with a pencil. What you're going to need is definitely two of these. Just use your favorite saw. It's easy to do. Next, stick them on there. Make sure they fit just right inside the grooves. Then you can use some hot glue. Just three good dabs on the edge will do it. Just flip it over and press it against the plastic. Now I know what you're thinking. This glue does not hold permanently. That's okay. We just need it to hold until we can flip it back over. So do that to both pieces right on the edge and just hold it down till it sets. It takes about 20 seconds. Next, flip the bucket over and what you're gonna do is grab just some small little screws. They don't need to be long. We don't want them to pop out through the end of the wood. So just take your drill and put it right in. Two or three in each strip of wood will be just right. Just put it in there, don't over tighten, and that's gonna hold it in place. Now it's time to put on the wheels. I got these little inexpensive caster wheels, but I need the drill bit to be just the right size, and we're gonna mark it one inch from each side of the wood we're gonna put four of these legs on. So once you get them marked, it's going ahead and we're gonna drill it. You can just drill all the way through the plastic. It's not gonna be a problem because when we set the leg in, it's gonna block the hole. So these little wheels are perfect. Now it's time to take that hot glue, put it right on the edge of the hole there and put the leg on. It's gonna hold it just great. Now, if you don't wanna use hot glue and you want a little different glue, go ahead, it'll work also. Just let it set up. I like using hot glue because it's fast. Once we get the legs in, look at this. They are excellent, exactly what we need. Now it's time to go ahead and decorate the bucket. I grabbed this twine over at Dollar Tree. Just take again our favorite hot glue, put it right on the edge. This is our starter piece. Just stick it right on there. You wanna make sure this first row is perfect. I use the edge of this bucket right on this line and that's going to be what I call my datum line. Just go ahead and set it all the way around and we're going to go around the whole bucket. Once you get that on, it's time to take a little bit of your inexpensive fabric, cut about 12 inches wide. We're going to use that hot glue again and we're going to fold over the edge. That's going to give us a nice edge to finish this off. What I did was I just worked my way down with that hot glue and kept folding it over. Be careful because it can get a little hot. Once we get both edges nice and done, what we're gonna do is fold it over the bucket. It's gonna cover all that plastic. Get that glue right on that last bit of rope right there. Spread it over and just mark it down right there. We're gonna take this all the way around the bucket and look at this. This is gonna be a great container. We can store books, dog toys, or even toys for the grandkids. It turned out great. Grab a plastic bin from Walmart for this project. I'm gonna start by drilling a few holes into the side of the bin. This is gonna be for handles down the road. Then I'm going to flip the bin over and I'm going to drill four holes, one in each corner of the plastic bin. I wanna dress this bin up, so I picked up some gray and white patterned fabric and I've cut it down to size so that it is the right height of the bin. Now I'm gonna use some spray adhesive to adhere the fabric to the plastic. When I get to the corners, I am going to cut up the side and then I can just fold these two pieces over each other, creating a really nice looking seam. To add the handles, I'm going to locate the hole that I drilled with my finger and then just poke through the fabric with a pair of scissors. Now I can thread the jute through and tie a knot on the inside to secure it in place. 
Now I'm going to add some feet to the bottom to raise this up off the ground and just make it look a little nicer. And there you have it. I have a really nice looking bin that I can keep out in the open. It looks so much better than your basic plastic bin and I can store all kinds of stuff in here. I have the storage container and I'd love to use it for my office supplies, but I really don't want to see what's inside. I'm starting by giving the container a quick sanding so that the surface is a little rougher. To make the outside look a little better, I want to add some clay designs before I do anything else. I always dust my molds with cornstarch before adding the air dry clay so that it releases easily when I'm done. I'm just going to keep adding clay until the mold is slightly overfilled. To remove the excess clay, I'm going to take an old ruler and just run it from the middle of the design to the outside edge. Now it's time to release the clay. Look at that beautiful flower and all those details. For right now, I'm just going to lay the clay where I want it. I've gone ahead and made some more impressions and I'm going to lay them all out on the side of the container. Now that I've decided where I want the impressions, I'm using some tacky glue to stick them in place. Once they're all glued, I'm just going to leave this to dry overnight. With the clay stuck in place and dry, it's time to paint them. I've chosen a silver spray paint for the first coat. This is going to cover the clear container and provide a really nice background. Now that the silver spray paint is dry, it's time to give the container a beautiful faux stone look. I'm using stone spray. It's a textured spray with different shades of beiges to give the look of stone. The trick with this spray is to do a lot of light coats. Each coat has to dry and then the next extra coat will help to build up that faux stone. I think this box and the texture are so fun. I love that what's inside is hidden now as well. The next time you're at the dollar store, grab one of these inexpensive plastic bins and give it a farmhouse makeover. I wanna give this storage piece a farmhouse feel, so I headed to my paint supplies and grabbed some sandpaper and white paint. Before painting the bin though, I wanna make sure that the surface is roughed up a bit. So I'm gonna give it a quick sanding with some medium grit sandpaper. Now that the bin is ready, I'm gonna give it a coat of white paint. I'm not gonna go and paint the inside of the bin because I actually like the gray and it'll match the dresser next to where it will be. To create the farmhouse look that I want, I'm gonna add some faux wood grain. I'm using a chip brush because of its uneven bristles and some brown glaze. Only a little bit of the glaze is needed on the brush and then I just lightly sweep it across the surface. This creates the faux wood and I can even create some faux knots with the glaze as well. If I want to soften up the lines, just this damp paper towel is all that I need. Once I've finished all the sides with the glaze and the faux wood grain, I'm going to leave it to dry overnight. Now that the paint and glaze are completely dry, I want to fancy up the handles a little bit. I've grabbed some of this thick twine and I'm going to wrap it around each one. I'm going to use a little dab of hot glue to hold each of the ends in place. I love the rustic touch the twine gives to the bin. I love how pretty this plastic bin looks now. You wouldn't even know it's the same one. A little bit of paint and it was easy to do. I hope this has inspired you to give your plastic bins a makeover as well. Thank you so much for watching Home Talk. I'll see you next time.